All right, hey, welcome. Greetings there, fellow makers. It's Bill here. And Britt. And welcome to Prop Live Q&A, your weekly prop and costume making Q&A session. Today, we're going to talk about some stuff. We're going to take your questions and answer them to the best of our ability. Um, yeah, what's been going on, Britt? We've been in the shop today. Yeah, we've actually gotten to be in the shop crazy pretty awesome it wasn't on a plane i wasn't yep. in a different state or nope. country nope. it's been awesome i see our buddy joel telling in the chat there joel that's not how you submit a question high five high five joel but go to punishprops.com slash live submit your question there <laughs> we all have to play by the rules joel that's how civilization works <laughs> before we get started today i want to share with you a video i made uh I posted it on Twitter, but I'm gonna we're gonna play it here. I just got a new camera and it shoots really high speed footage. And I was out on a walk and I saw some bees, and I was filming this bee. And I it was it, I thought it was gonna be awesome. And when I when I reviewed the footage, I realized this bee was peeing. Let's see if you see it. Oh, also I added music. <laughs> <laughs> I was losing it. I was reviewing this footage. If you look, ready? Ready? Boo! <laughs> oh, start again. Boo! This is all it takes to make Bill happy. I spent way. like half an hour doing this today. <laughs> Boo! Oh, all so right. Great. So. So I posted that over on Twitter. If you want to watch it again and again and again, <laughs> go over to twitter.com slash chinbeard and look at my recent post. I'm so glad that camera <laughs> is paying for itself, basically. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's great, though, because with all this practice, um, the next time we finish a proper costume, we are definitely going to do some cool slow motion mm -hmm. stuff with it because yes we every, are like walking looks way cooler just yep. everything looks cooler mm -hmm. so that'll be fun um let's see um uh, tuesday i started working on a star lord helmet kit and uh it's a kit that my friend will over at wm armory made a couple of years ago he used to work in the in our shop with us uh and he made it back then i got the first casting it was kind of rough so i spent tuesday fixing it up and getting it ready to finish um let's see if you go to his website if you go to wmarmory.com uh and look up oh, hit the search thing and look up uh star lord helmet you can look at the post that he did there's part three there's part two and part one is not called star lord helmet because will goofed up <laughs> Yeah, but uh, in each part, he's, he links to the other parts. Yeah, if you just look up helmet, you can see. There it is. There's part one. Yeah. So he did this very traditional light. Started it out of uh, clay. Did a lot of sculpting. Made a junk mold of it. Cast a copy of that junk mold. And then used that copy, this copy here, to... Excuse me. Oh, that's... There you go. There's part two. Use that copy to make uh, a hard, rigid piece to do all the fine detail on. And made a mold of that, cast it, and I've been working on it. Uh, actually, I used the slow mo too uh, for the live stream. I uh, on Tuesday, I uh, was working on this helmet, and I was demonstrating how cutoff wheels can break on a rotary tool, and I got some slow mo footage of that. So anyway, that video is up on the YouTube channel that went up yesterday. If you want to go check that out go for it you can get caught up to speed on it i'll be working on that for the next couple of weeks on our live stream getting it all ready to go i spent today uh, or yesterday fiberglassing the inside of it spent today cleaning it up and I, it was all primed and ready to go ready to paint so we'll be doing that on the live stream tuesday at noon pacific yeah i'll we'll have to make sure we have stuff for the next week for the eyes because we might need some acrylic or something i think we'll do the eyes uh the week after that well we, we like the materials yeah. like that'll be the week after that but yeah. we need because we never leave the house so no. i have to plan like two weeks in advance um if i have to order something or if mm -hmm. we have to go to the plastic store because so far away Ugh. so anyway uh if you're looking to get um 
if you're looking to get those uh, a Star Lord helmet or, or many things, you can start looking at Etsy because um, I don't think Will's making them anymore. But if we look up Star Lord helmet. You may find some. Look at that. There's a whole bunch of them. In fact, there's one from Solo Roboto Industries. That's our buddy Steven, and his is quite good. So if you're looking to get your own kit of a helmet like that, then go on over to Etsy and take a peek around. Then you can follow along. You can sand it, clean it up, and get it all painted uh, for your next Star-Lord cosplay or just to put up on the old shelf. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else do we have? Um, oh, also, on Monday I put up a video that's kind of a showcases all the videos and playlists that we have. Um, it, it dawned on me that we have a crap load of videos, and uh, if you're just getting started, or if you've just run into our uh, channel for the first time, then it'd be kind of hard to navigate all that. So we organized a whole bunch of stuff into appropriate playlists, and that video kind of covers all of that. And people seem to really like that video. Yeah, even if you're you've only been following us for under a year there's so much content that bill did before that mm -hmm. um and now it's easier to find on the youtube side yeah um, on the website it's it's kind of already categorized but yeah i'm really glad you did that video um we put it on the new to prop making part of our website too yep or you did mm -hmm. good job that's awesome yeah all right we've got a bunch of new questions cool so here this yeah. this is that video just just an fyi if you haven't seen it yet, that one's really worth uh, checking out. Especially if you've missed some of our early stuff. Because there's a I did a 10-part um, Risty Queen's Blade Mace video like four years ago. 10-part video series that goes over my whole build process. It's worth checking out. Not a lot of people have seen them. I know, because I went and looked at all of them to get this video ready. Not a lot of people watch them. But they're still good. Which videos? The, the Queen's Blade one. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll show you. Yeah. Look at that. That was a lot of good... Um, Look at that. A lot of different techniques in that. Yeah, like getting reference images, sourcing your materials, making spikes. I don't know if any of it's EVA foam either. Nope. There's insulation foam. Mm -mm. I also did some really, really uh, sort of sketchy vacuum forming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Arma is curious if we are going to make it out to TwitchCon. We might. I submitted a panel... If that pa if we get uh, accepted, that'll make our decision a lot easier. <laughs> so we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, uh, for those interested in TwitchCon, I believe the tickets just went on sale. Mm -hmm. So you can go to it's probably TwitchCon.com or something like that, and it's in Lo Long Beach Convention Center. Is I it? Think. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I mean it's in a different place than last year. Um, I think it's the Long Beach one. I haven't been to that convention center before, so. I like that area though. We usually go to Anaheim, so we like that airport stuff. All right. Yeah. Uh, last thing. Speaking of travel, I am going to VidCon. Ta-da! Speaking of Anaheim, a lot of other YouTube people I know. About a year ago, we hit our 100,000 mark on uh, YouTube, and that's when we kind of realized, hey, I guess we're YouTubers. Uh, friends of ours who went to VidCon were like, if you're a YouTuber, you should go to uh, VidCon. Uh, so I am. Uh, hey, VidCon Australia. Jazz is going to be there. That'll be cool. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to go down there. I'm going to be down in LA for like a week working on some videos with a bunch of my friends down there. People like Frank Capolito. Potentially Evil Smith. Evil Ted Smith. <laughs> uh, That's like the one way his name is not abbreviated. Yeah. Uh, but I'll be down there. I'm going to go to VidCon. Maybe I'll see, see, see some of you guys down there. That should be a good time. That's in a couple weeks. So, VidCon. Do we have any other news, or should we just dive into the questions? Um, we can probably just go right into the questions. Awesome. All right. Once again, you guys, if you're watching live and you haven't submitted a question, but you have a burning desire to know something about prop and costume making, a project you're working on, a project we're working on, Project we've done in the past, or how we do what we do, submit that question at punishedprops.com slash live. Send it on over here. Oh, real quick, too. Uh, if you are watching this as a recording and not live, you can submit your questions during the week. Yes, you can. And we'll uh, gather them. If it is a very general question, try going over to our website, punishedprops.com. There's a little search bar. 
uh, try typing in some of the words there. Uh, there's a chance we've already answered that mm -hmm. question before. One of the things we do is we take all of the submitted questions and then just put them below the video on our website so it's searchable. So like if you have something general, like a common question Bill gets is, can you uh, mold a foam prop? Mm -hmm. uh, we've answered that a couple times on the stream, so you can just search for that there and it will probably pop up. So you can go and watch that episode. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, because those ones, um, if they're ones we get every week, I tend to delete them because we've answered them before. Right. So, yeah. We also have a, an FAQ yes. uh, over on the site. So that's worth digging into as well. But anyway, all right, let's get started here. Uh, starting with JJ, how do you dispose of your spray paint cans once you are done using them? I th just throw them away. I don't know if there's a, a, a more appropriate way to, to do that. Let me uh, let me look it up. <laughs> Are you looking it up? I am. It's, it's to... probably different per, by state. Um, I know recycling is different for every state. Ah, so. This is fun. Uh, if you just go type in how to dispose of spray paint cans, it'll say in California, UK, New York City, and then Seattle. I guess I should look up Seattle because that's where I live. Quick, Let's all learn together. Quick guide to residential recycling in King County. Uh, spray paint. Aluminum. Empty aerosol spray cans. Wait. Garbage. It's garbage in Washington State. It looks like right. You just throw it away, I guess. Yeah, yeah. At the at the center, they like split things up, like the garbage things. So it does yeah. say to dry out your paint by mixing it with kitty litter or something called paint hardener to put in the garbage. I guess just taking a a bucket of paint and throwing it in the trash isn't isn't <laughs> legit. At least the paint cans we throw away are indeed empty, because that's what they request. Yeah, yeah. We use every last bit. Um, what if I just ge look up a general? How to dispose? When recycling your Krylon steel aerosol spray can, this is on Krylon.com, make sure to follow these three easy steps. Use your Krylon product until the container is empty. Remove the plastic spray cap to be recycled separately. Recycle spray cans along with other containers according to your community guidelines. So, whatever uh, your state or specific community says, then that's what you gotta do. Seems like it's general. General. It's different based on where you live. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Iona Leth says that kitty litter is also good for oil spills. Very good to know. <laughs> Thank you, JJ. Let's grab this next one here from Stephen R. I've been looking into getting pepper curl files for a previsula S4 or 5, the Clone Wars helmet. Uh, I'm going to search for that so I know what it is. I've come across work in progress sets that build layers upon layers of fiberglass and resin and bondo on top of the paper model. Why is this method used instead of EVA foam? There are a it really depends on how much effort you want to put into finishing it, how much cost. Um, if you start building a Peppercore helmet out of uh, cardstock and then fiberglass it and then bondo it and sand it and smooth it, it takes a lot longer, but it's a lot more rigid. And you can sand it to a high shine. You can paint it with things like enamels to get a super high gloss on it. Um, if you wanted to do EVA foam, you could do something similar. Just know it's going to stay flexible and it's more challenging to get a higher like fidelity on the surface detail on foam. Uh, foam's a lot quicker. The other thing is that uh, the Peppercura files for foam and Peppercura files for paper tend to be different. And sometimes you'll find someone who made Peppercura files specifically for working with foam but not as many put people put as much effort into doing that because um, you got to take into account the thickness of the foam so there's a lot of um, customizing that comes into making a pepper curl file work well with foam so not a lot of people do that uh, I'll tell you what though if you uh, get pretty good at modifying uh, your EVA foam pepper curl files you could take that helmet uh, for your pre Vizsla uh, costume and be the person that makes that file for everyone else to use and make out of foam. So it just depends on how much effort you want to put into it. 
Um, I tried to make this. I was actually going through some old videos to prep for Monday's video. And I found my old Iron Man video. Oh, the, the series? Yeah, I had like a week and a half to... Bi and I was like, I'm going to make an Iron Man costume. And I found pep files for foam for Iron Man. And I was like, I'm going to do this. Yeah, you were like, I could do this so fast. <laughs> yeah, and uh, if you want to watch my descent into madness, go ahead and watch those videos. I ended up only making it a, a, a boot and a sleeve. Uh, and, and it worked out okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, the rest of it... It was only foam. I never got it fitted. I never really could wear it. I gave it to my brother. He finished it, but then he eventually threw it away and then made it out of uh, fiberglass. So <clears throat> that's a fun trip down memory lane. Yeah, that was, uh, <coughs> you, you were learning a lot and you weren't quite sure how long your builds could take, especially since you had never done that specific build before. It wasn't like you're making another set of Mass Effect armor. Uh, it was a whole new thing. Yeah. Had to get it to fit right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's an example. Someone on the RPF had modified Peppercura files for foam, and I just used those. Uh, and they they, were, they worked fine. It's just, I just didn't give myself nearly enough time. Thank you, Stephen R., for the question. Hopefully, uh, somewhere in that last bit of rambling, an answer formed. Large Psy says, I'm working on EVA foam armor that has glossy and matte sections in the same color. How would you achieve this finish? I used the two most similar colors I could find, the glossy in a spray can, and the matte was just an acrylic that I applied with a foam brush. Is there a better solution than the one I used? Um, if that solution worked, then it's a good one. Yeah, it sounds like it worked. Mm -hmm. What I would probably do is spray it all, or paint it all, the color you want, then spray it all with like a gloss varnish to get everything shiny. Then mask off everything that you want to keep shiny and spray the rest of it with a matte varnish. And that'll change the specularity of those surfaces. You can have a lot of fun changing how shiny different parts of a costume are, especially if it's like the same color. Or like um, like the, uh, if you're making a model, the eyes should be shiny or the lips should be shiny because they're, they're wet. Um, so you can brush on a little bit of like gloss varnish to make that part look wet yeah that'd be really cool um i just picked up some uh aerosol shellac too i want to try that out and see how flexible it is on foam mm -hmm. we like and i got some gloss varnish too uh yeah yeah definitely do a test if you want to try out that method just to make sure that when you mask off a glossy area that it doesn't leave mm -hmm. tape marks on yeah. it because then it won't be glossy make sure anymore. that when you when you spray down that clear gloss that it is totally dry yeah before you do any masking because um it'll the masking tape could could make it not look glossy it could ruin it do tests small scale tests hey patches in the chat hey hi buddy i think that's a bingo card yeah uh let's see here other world cosplay wants to know did you uh what did you do in the beginning of your youtube and prop making career to network and market yourself uh if you want to talk about youtube specifically i didn't do anything um on purpose for a couple of years all i did was focus on making videos just make lots and lots of videos uh but also we watched youtube videos every day every every evening um the last couple days uh during dinner it's been youtube and sherlock uh and then uh so we're we're, we're familiar with a lot of other makers on youtube and we we interact so people get to know you that way um if someone clicks on your if you leave a comment and they go to click on your youtube name and it turn in and you have no vid videos like oh just a viewer cool but if you have a bunch of videos they'll be like oh who's this guy you know mm -hmm. so make a lot of videos make a lot of content um for youtube what do we do to market ourselves Britt? i don't even know Our networking <laughs> The funny story, going to Dragon Con counts as networking. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, really, networking means making friends. Yeah. It, uh, having, especially if it's in-person contact, that that's so great. If you meet another maker in person, it just it has a much more lasting impression than, than just a comment on the internet. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, for comments, Bill is so good about that. Like, whenever he... Uh, 
like he's watching a video and he says something out loud he's like i should tell that person that thing i just right, said right. That, yeah, it, and a nice positive thing so yeah. he'll either tweet it to them or put it in the comments down below if i'm yeah if i'm watching a video and like uh, grant thompson did a video the other day he was casting uh a gear out it? of copper yeah he's yeah. casting copper and making these sand uh molds that were amazing and the video was just really really cool so i made a point to spread the word you know make sure i tagged him so maybe he saw it i don't know but just like be the be that person who's engaged engaged with the with the community where you want to make an impact um and then when I, and then the other thing i did i gave away a lot of props <laughs> that's true i forgot you used to do that i did um that was my thing i made molds of things so i could cast copies of stuff i sold a lot of props but like um um, I already kind of knew, like, Brian Brushwood and Veronica Belmont, they did, uh, friends of ours who were doing a, uh, a show, they asked me to make them some props, and I told them, I will give you the props if you let me be on the show, and that was the deal that we did, that was actually a week or two before I quit my job, um, other, there were plenty of other things like, stories like that that didn't turn out that way, <laughs> I gave away props to people who I never heard from again, and that's just kind of how it, how it goes, um, but just be, just be giving, um, be active and be the person who, uh, in, in whatever community where you want to make an impact, be the person who is always Johnny on the spot to help out. Um, that's what we call marketing and marketing ourselves. Thank you. Other world cosplay. Um, oh, uh, Hey Patch says that he first found out about us through a podcast. Can't remember which one, but we were a guest. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's something Bill uh, has done a lot in the past, as well as be guests on podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, you still do one too every every Tuesday morning. Uh, I do, are... yeah, over on the, the morning stream. Does your, um, does your segment even have a name? <laughs> yeah, making things with making, Bill. Making things with Bill. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, let me see. Also in the chat there, Blackthorn had a question. Uh, you can submit those questions over at punishprops.com slash live. Just send it off in there it'll show up on our screen here and we will answer it all right let's grab another one this is from our buddy nerdy views is there a specific kind of steel wool you would use to prep plastic for paint uh a fine steel wool like double zero or triple zero yeah um i, I tried... was just doing that today actually. yeah yeah you were the uh sketch bright pads too yeah frank really likes those uh when he's doing like little little creature models before he primes them he scuffs them up with scotch bright which seems like a really fine kind of steel wool only it's plastic uh it, i tried it out um i have a kitty mask i'll be finishing that i got as a kit at uh construct and it, it seemed good uh, i think steel wool is a little little bit more aggressive uh, it depends so this you can see it's measured in zero zero, zero is fine Zero zero very fine, <laughs> triple zero extra fine, what? and quadruple zero, super fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then what were the coarse ones measured? Um, oh, well, then they one go. two three okay. four going up. Yeah. Okay. So you want extra fine, or if you can find it, super get fine. yourself some super fine steel wool. <laughs> I think they would just fall apart when you touch it. Available. I'll put a link in the chat. Little Amazon affiliate link action for you guys. Available on Amazon.com for six dollars and seventy-three cents. That's enough steel wool right there to last you a fortnight. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Uh, thanks, Nerdy Views. Good question. <laughs> um, let's grab this one here from Bill Helm Creations. I've been working with monster clay lately, but I'm having a hard time smoothing it out. Do you have any tips or tricks about working with monster clay, Brit? Britt did that recently. I, I did a very, very small thing yep. in Monster Clay. Uh, when Bill was working on, on the Cerbatzala, I did the base for it, the mm -hmm. little rocket jet engine. Uh, and I that was my only experience working with it. And I just used some sculpting tools, and to make it look more organic, I lightly grazed it with a heat gun, and mm -hmm. it melted it a little bit. Oh, yeah. Uh, because it's wax-based, right? Like So it's uh, when it cools down, it becomes very rigid, which is great for molding. Um, I think that's one of the reasons people like to work with it. It never dries out because it's wax oil-based, mm -hmm. I guess. I don't know. That's my one, one little experience working with it. Yep. So you can't really sand clay, but you can uh, smooth it out. If you're going to do that, use rubbing alcohol. 
as a lubricant. Oh. Uh, what's great about that is you can you like like have a gloved finger and like smooth it with the, with rubbing alcohol. That uh, sounds smart. And then it evaporates, which is great. So there you go, Bilhelm Creations. Couple of uh, tips for you there for working with monster clay. Oh yeah, hey Patch points out to get the right kind of Scotch Bright pads. Yes, we we did that. Uh, as well where we got ones we thought were right and they ended up just being the kind you use it was a sponge yeah it was a sponge so yeah the these, these thinner ones that are just the mesh and don't have any soap in them they they do exist so yeah people are curious uh if why you're quiet on the microphone that's because i'm much louder the mic is right in front of me too maybe yeah. maybe it's because the bar is here i'll just put it closer to Brittany. all right <laughs> it's tricky because it's like an omnidirectional mic yeah uh, Maybe it's because I'm sitting farther back. I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's grab another one. This one's from Poodwaddle. Do y'all remember the laser engraved prop tart or pop tart? Um, I'm not sure what that's referencing. Did someone laser edge a pop tart? I guess so. I don't remember. I don't know. So no. <laughs> There's so many cool things that the prop tart community <clears throat> has made, and I forget ones. Like like that logo was designed. A year ago, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been a while. Modulus props in the chat says, from our previous question there, that you can freeze monster clay and then wet sand it with uh, isopropyl alcohol. Cool. I'll have to try that sometime. All right, moving on. And uh, about halfway through the show, we only have a handful of questions left. So if you go ahead and submit your question via punishprops.com slash live which i don't see joel's question in here joel maybe it went to our spam folder maybe it did so go ahead and submit Poor those joel. questions and we will answer them all right uh or we'll end early and we can go have dinner <laughs> nostalgia wants to know uh, i'm about to try to put a leather handle on my eva sword like your skyrim steel axe build uh excuse me your facebook link to kathy's handle tutorial is dead oh no What's another good resource? Leather Noob here. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Yeah, I wonder if um she's uh, revamped her website, so maybe all her links got moved around. Yeah. Um, God Save the Queen Fashions. That's Ga Kathy uh, from GSDQ. Uh, that's the website. Is there a blog? I wonder if maybe it's over there. Blog? Click on that. Oh, let's go on this journey together, everyone. Oh, did you see what Modulus Prop said about Monster Clay? Freezing yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I, good. I was I was reading stuff. <clears throat> reading questions. Let's see here. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to search. Let's use the search function. Um, handle. Let's see what happens. Nothing. Nope, nothing. I guess it's gone. All right. Um, I did a video? Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> That's the, quite a long time ago. Yeah, you did a whole series on uh, finishing the Steel X kit. Yeah, I can't remember how. It, it could be in the video. I was like, just go watch Kathy's thing. Yeah, Craig. probably. Um, so I don't know where that went. Oh, uh, you know what? Harrison might have. Oh, no, because, yeah. Cause, he would have linked Kath, it. Yeah, yeah Kathy uh, was the one who actually did it. He handed it off to her um because it is a little it was a little bit complicated it was perfect that she had made that thing let's do a quick search on our channel see what i find um skyrim steel x yeah because you've done other handles since then but not that complicated yeah i have a three-part series here that's not totally loading it's probably going to be part three oh. yeah kathy's handle tutorial page not found Oh no, broken links. What did I do in the video? I, <laughs> I was singing, apparently. Uh. Um. Yeah, I'm willing to bet I was just like, go. Go follow Kathy's thing. Alright, so that's no help at all. <laughs> but, um. I guess uh, maybe we could just put... You know what? I The best I can do is try and find that tutorial and link it on on the notes in this show. But if I can't find that, then I promise we will post a picture 
of the completed handle, detailed pictures of the completed handle, in the post for this episode on PunishedPops.com. Does that sound good? Sure. Does that sound good, like, everyone? Sure, it sounds great. That might be the best that we can do if we can't find it. So, uh, looking forward to seeing how the rest of your acts turns out, though, Nostalgia, and good luck with the build. Joshua wants to know, do you have any advice for handle wrapping a leather or suede cord? Yeah, I put those next to each yeah. other. I made an iron axe for my 3D printer. It came out great, but as a maker, I'm not happy with it. I tagged you on Twitter if you want to have a look. Um, you can tag links in the questions you submit, too. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, Max Money says, I found the Skyrim Max Part 3. Can I post a link? Yeah, go for it. So, um, I haven't done a ton of leather wrapping, but... Um, the easiest thing you can do is to brush like contact cement, like barge on the handle of whatever it is you made, brush contact cement on the back of your leather, and then just wrap it in a spiral pattern. That's the easiest way to do it. There's all kinds of crazy leather handle wrapping things you can do. I imagine, um, there's a lot of YouTube videos. Yeah. To bet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've done the, uh, was it the... The little dagger, the Skyrim dagger kit mm -hmm. that was wrapped. Um, your giant For Honor X was wrapped, right? Or I, I think that was that just up? a spiral. Yeah. Just I just did it in a spiral, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, like those are the simple spiral wraps. Yep. So um, I think the steel axe was the most complicated one you did. It could be, yeah. Uh, oh, Poodwaddle found the uh, laser engraved prop tart. Let's. Ooh, I want to see take that. A look at that. Thanks for sh um, finding that. All right. Oh, <laughs> huh. I do remember this. Okay, I was picturing like a picture of a prop tart engraved on something, not that it was a prop uh, pop tart actually with an engraving on it. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was done at a school thing, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's amazing. I bet it smelled great too when it was melting oh, the frosting. That sounded really good. <laughs> Who's yelling at me? Um. All right, there you go, Joshua. Look up on uh, YouTube. That's my answer. Check out uh, what other handle wrapping videos are out there. Matthew, over at Petita Props, wants to know, have you seen the Aquaman from the new Justice League movie? I'm asking because his armor looks like it gives him an insane range of motion. Wondering if you have any advice for that level of flexibility. And there's a video. All right, let's... Oh, that's cool. Here, let's check this out. Oh, that's awesome. I don't know how I feel about this Flash outfit. Yeah, I'm over it, though, because it's like, I don't, it's already done, so it's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> I really like the Flash armor from the show. I like the Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, he's amazing. I'm willing to bet that for the movie, they made uh, the armor probably 3D printed or sculpted. They made molds of it, and then they probably cast a lot of it in, like, a urethane rubber. Yeah, super flexible yeah. materials. Uh, that was looked like what they did for the Power Ranger suits for the new movie mm -hmm. as well. Um, it used to be that that was more the version they would do just for the stunt suit. So, like, Iron Man, there was a flexible version mm -hmm. of him um, for the stunt guy. But now it's, like, they're just putting on the main characters, like, for their, their hero yep. suits. Because uh, now they can make them look legitimately good and in, in like a hero outfit yeah and the molds for those are crazy yeah like they're some of them were designed to have like like two it's like a two-part mold and so it's like the the thickness is the actual material thickness yeah like so it's like, not just like an eighth not, of an inch or something yeah they're not just brushing or slushing it in it's it's oh, so that's probably how they did it a lot of molding and casting um not cheap and it takes a long time but that's a really really great way to do it if uh, if you you could totally do something very similar with EVA foam, you just have to make sure the foam stays flexible. So if you seal it with something like Epsilon or something more rigid, then when you try and do your kung fu moves, it's gonna crack. So that's why we like using things like latex rubber to seal the foam. You get a really nice finish on it, and it's super super flexible rubber. Uh, and you can make your foam armor out of fairly thin pieces. We usually start with like floor mat foam, which is about a half an inch thick. But you can make it out of, you know, six millimeter foam or even thinner. I've made armor pieces out of like two millimeter foam before. Um, and especially if you seal it all with like uh, latex rubber, it will be very durable. So, there it, so you go. it sounds like a fun challenge. Um, I imagine the RPF 
group that's interested in uh, making the Aquaman from the new movie, there's probably talks about how some people are already trying to build it. That's the thing about like popular movies is you can usually find someone else who's also interested and yeah. see what they're planning on doing. And then, yeah, some people like to be like, have the costume out before the movie's even out. So someone's probably trying to do it right now. Just have to find them <laughs> and be their friend. God, I wonder if Evil Ted's uh, getting a kickback from Polytech. Every time we, we mention Latex, he just yells Poly Latex 60 in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> we got to meet some of the Polytech people at Construct. We did, right yeah. There. Yeah, yeah. they have some cool stuff that um, uh, we'll probably try in the future. All right, let's keep rolling here thanks for the question there patina props next one comes from our buddy sam over at bio cosplay he wants to know what our favorite dinosaurs are i liked uh littlefoot from the land before time <laughs> which i believe there are 13 of them out now oh uh, geez, 13 really what's your favorite uh, dinosaur i think i only saw the first one um i like all dinosaurs equally they are they are all great Land before time. I never had a specific there. dinosaur. I had a bunch of toys, but I liked all of them. Actually, you know what? Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking I had this set of dinosaur toys, but I also had a dragon, and that was the one I played with the most. Oh, wait. They are numbered. Yep. 13. 14. Journey of the Brave. The 14th one, they didn't They didn't number. They stopped numbering yeah, them. Yeah, <laughs> they stopped numbering them after 13. It's like uh, they're going to start using letters like Photoshop. Uh, Land Before Time 11, Invasion of the Tiny Sauruses. Or Land Before Time 10, The Great Long Neck Migration. Riveting stuff, you guys. <laughs> I like the brontosauruses. They're cool. Like Littlefoot. Hey, the chat's agreeing with me. Dragons. Dragons are best. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Let's grab another one from our other buddy. Sam's favorite is the Stegosaurus. Oh, okay. That's a good one. I think Sam asked that question just because he wanted to share <laughs> what his favorite that's, dinosaur that's is. That's fine. The Stegosaurus is a respectable dinosaur. Very good. Okay, Rocket Man wants to know, how do you protect a 3D file from theft once you sell it digitally, such as on Etsy? Easy. You don't. That's one of the reasons why I don't give out my 3D files or even sell them. Once a digital file is out there, it's out there. Um, you could try and do some sort of complicated DRM, but, uh, that's what they do for music and people still seem to find a way to copy music. So, um, any effort to digitally protect your files once they're out there are generally, uh, not going to work. What I found, and this has worked for me, is that if you are a super cool person and you're really helpful and really nice then people will want to support you by buying you products if you make good products. So we have our um, our books, our, our digital, our eBooks, right? They're, they're just PDFs. When you get it, it's just a PDF. And if you want to just email it to your friend, you can do that. Uh, I would prefer you encourage that friend to buy it from me, but I can't stop you from doing that. Uh, my hope is that you enjoy the work that we do and you're thankful for it and you would like to support us for creating good things. Uh, so far, that has worked out pretty well for us. and um, That seems to be the best form of DRM. Just build up a lot of goodwill and people will want to help you. So be a good person in the community. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what services... Um develop for 3d model files for 3d printing because you think of other industries like the audiobook industry so audible.com uh you uh they're kind of like drm right you need to have the you client. have to yeah you have to listen to it through their yeah thing and it's a great service um but they set it up so you have to use them but they made it very easy so it's you know it's affordable and easy and you can get a free song or, or not yeah. song a, a audiobook so if you get hooked on it so i wonder for uh, 3D files, if something like that is also, maybe it already exists. I don't know. It's a tricky world though because you, that, it's the kind of thing you have to have the rights for. You know? Yeah. So it's like so for, like I couldn't, like read, uh, Game of Thrones books as audiobooks and put them up on Audible and have my versions be sold there because I don't have the rights to do that. So, I don't know. That's that's a really interesting question. Um, 
this I think this is the video uh, this is where I was just gonna drop this in the chat this is Adam Curry uh, the pod father he was one of the first guy doing podcasting he did a really good talk on the value propositions uh, value for value because uh, the same thing with podcasts you put a podcast out there and uh, uh, people people don't pay it's free so how do you make money on it you know you create value for people and then they will want to support you it actually works i'm here to tell you that it works all right thank you rocket man props also hey patch wants to know what your favorite dragon movie is i saw he didn't <laughs> use the contact form and i don't care because because i really want to answer this well favorite dragon movie or he movie says, featuring a dragon he says rain of fire rain of fire is awesome when matthew mcconaughey makes has his handmade axe and dives off of a thing to kill a dragon he doesn't kill the dragon spoiler he gets eaten by the dragon <laughs> but it's still awesome okay so rain of fire is a great movie however you could have replaced the dragons with any kind of creature i prefer dragons that use the dragony uniqueness um and like that one was just a monster movie so i was kind of disappointed with the dragons in that movie because they were mindless things like creatures um dragon heart uh would be my favorite if it wasn't for the old cartoon movie, Flight of Dragons. Ah. So Dragon Hearts, um, the dragon in that... Uh, was I am the last one. Yeah, he's probably my favorite no. dragon, but Flight of Dragons, the old cartoon movie. I think it's great. Very good. Yes, yeah, so this is all very important information. <laughs> okay. Habiteer Workshop has a prop-making question. Okay. What color would you recommend painting Vash's... Trigun gun trying to find that metallic bluish silver with no luck well someday i will make that gun that's gonna happen that's one of my favorite guns um and when i paint it whoa i just <laughs> i don't know how i did that um when i paint it i will probably paint it with all clad lacquer paints you can do like chrome i i picture it being like a chromed shiny finish on the gun um, they have let's let's go take a look at their website allclad2.com I don't know why it's allclad2 I don't know if allclad1 was a thing but if we go to finishes and we go to uh, let's try high shine yes polished oh, aluminum how to train your dragon how could I forget about that oh, one? also really good. good good job Sam that's also <laughs> a good one uh, and uh, apparently I get a gold star for the Sean Connery impression thank you so here's some shiny lacquers. Uh, the the important thing is that you get a good glossy black coat down first, and then you spray these on top with your airbrush. There's chrome for plastic. There's polished aluminum. Um, there's a, a couple of stainless steel, gold titanium. All of these shiny finishes have subtle differences. So you might want to pick up a couple of the chrome shiny ones. Like the... Uh, the polished aluminum is actually brighter than the normal uh, chrome. I've played with both of those. So you'd want to do some tests and compare them and see which one you think would work best. But if you want a really good shiny finish, in fact, I have, I have a, uh, let's go to tested.com. I have a um, tutorial, a shiny gun, um, close enough. How to make shiny metal prop finishes. This is where I went over that. And we will link to this in the old show notes area. This is how I painted the Ray Blaster. You see I used the uh, polished aluminum is what I used uh, on top of the all clad gloss black. And then I used their aqua gloss to seal it. It's a pretty good shiny finish there. So there's that. All right. That's how I would paint the dry gun. gun. There you go. Dropping a link in the old chat. Cool. The chat has a lot of good helpful information too good so, good job guys you're all so smart thank you habiteer workshop next one here comes from dirk soul i use eva and lightweight spackle to build a lot of my props what is the oddest not meant for material that you routinely use for cosplay building hmm. yeah whenever i go to amazon the recommended products are like oh, i don't know you bought some weird stuff yeah trying to think what the is the weirdest stuff one. Uh, i've got i mean we like we use like aluminum foil anything i think whatever i i'm like oh i know what i need it's in the kitchen <laughs> like yeah. foil or wax paper or um the kitchen scale that is now a shop scale 
covered in crap. Yeah, we have one of those little mortar and pestle things that's made out of like marble, and it's like this really good uh, dome shape. The interior is good for heat forming small, mm. small EVA foam things. So that'll end up in the shop, and then your foam smells like herbs, which is nice. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm sure there's something, I just can't think of it. Because to me, it's normal, right? Like, you just look at a thing and you're like, oh, this is a shop tool now. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think over time, too, I've ended up just buying, like, all of whatever the appropriate tools and materials are. Um, That's true, because we want to try them out. Um, mm -hmm. Instead of just trying to uh, make a helpful tool from scratch it's like well we haven't tried the official one so let's try it because then we'll know if yeah. it's worth getting so. i have a toaster oven that i use oh, for, for small vacuum forming toast that's probably it the toaster yeah. oven for our small vacuum that i chamber. don't use for anything else i don't put food in it anymore no yeah. no <laughs> uh sir doomington wants to know what i'm drinking this is coke zero not a paid sponsorship but if anyone in the chat works for coke and you'd love to pay us <laughs> to drink more of this then let me know Hey, Patch says I should have the dragon cast. I agree. Although, I mean, like, that, the thing about fantasy movies is a lot of them aren't that great. So, uh, there's a lot of really bad dragon movies out there. Like, they're still making Dragonheart movies. Yeah. I think, actually, Patrick Stewart's voice is the newest dragon. Awesome. Yeah. And they're made for TV, but, like, the CG is getting good enough. I was like, I might actually watch that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep moving on. Thanks for the question, Dirk Soul. Next one comes to us from our buddy, Hey Patch. He says, hey guys, what is something you want to learn how to do? Well, I have many things I want to learn how to do. I have a metal lathe now, and I'd like to learn how to use it. I feel like after watching all of Click Springs videos that I have a pretty good start, pretty good idea how to use that thing. But I also want to get a mill, learn how to use that. So that's up there. I want to learn how to weld. Yes. Yeah. I think I think that'll be a very yeah. useful thing for you to have. Mm -hmm. It's like a lot of the YouTube maker videos we watch, welding is like their hot glue. Right. They use for everything. I just weld it together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for them, it's like just is part of their tool set. Yeah. And for us, it's like, well, I haven't tried it before. I made a table out of steel in 10 minutes because yeah. I have a welder. That'll, that'll definitely be in a new shop. Yeah. Like... Our, our basement is not good for welding. <laughs> no. Oh, no. That would be terrible. Yeah. I want to learn how to sculpt. Um, like, mm -hmm. actually watch some sculpting videos and try out some different clays and then make something this year. Like, because that seems like such a good, accessible way to make a prop, uh, to sculpt something and then mold the master. Uh, and I, we haven't done that. We haven't, like, we haven't done a video on that. So, it's something I want to learn. Everyone else has tried it. Mm-hmm. Like modulus props and fearless facade and all the all the cool kids. All the cool kids. Yeah. So there you go. Look forward to that. Fortunately, I have the metal lathe, so I can start learning now. In fact, I made oh, I just we mailed it out. I made a very tiny Jimmy Daresta ice pick. It was that big, and I mailed it to him. <laughs> uh, I made that, and I did it all on my tiny lathe. All right, thank you, Hey Patch. We've got one more question here from Robin. What is a good barge contact cement alternative? Is DAP a good brand? DAP will work just fine. I will say that if you're using it to like put two like um, seams together, and it's gonna be bend a lot, uh, what I like to do is brush on a good layer of uh, the barge contact cement and let it dry for about five minutes and then brush on a second layer and let that dry for five minutes and then put it together that's with the dap it's just it's a little bit thinner and two yeah. good layers will will uh really help out a lot no you're right that it's totally helpful with two layers and some foam just takes more like it soaks in more like different brands of foam uh all different kinds of eva foam densities and stuff so sometimes you need two coats anyway um but yeah, that's a, that is good advice. Uh, there you go, Robin. Yeah, that will work. <clears throat> Next one. Oh, hey, Patch. Snuck another question in here. Yeah, I'm, I'm adding more. Awesome. Uh, how did you guys go about getting a real-life book of the Foamsmith books made? Well, um, I had the the e-books. And the thing with an e-book is it's completely self-published. So as the, the instant I was done typing it, 
and I exported a PDF. I put it on my website and I told people to buy it. <laughs> there was that was it. Uh, the process of getting a printed book made is so much more different because it's got to be formatted correctly for print, uh, and then you have to pay someone to print it. And fortunately, Brittany had just quit her job, and I was like, "Hey, Britt, we have these ebooks. Can you turn them into real books?" So, what did you do? Uh, unfortunately, self-publishing is becoming more popular. So even they're... even printed printed self-publishing yes. yeah is um becoming more popular so there are people who will write a book and then release an ebook and the print book at the same time and they it's all self-publishing so there are websites that support what they call print on demand so i went through create space and create space uh you can go um figure out your book format there uh the valuable part about that um that website is there are forums and I would just go to the forums and I would just type in a question and search for it and someone asked the same question as me like every two steps of the way I was like what size book should I make how long can a book be how much does it cost to print uh, what software should I use like like everyone's already asked those questions so I would just read I read through a bunch of forums I ended up using Adobe InDesign um, and I went with a standard like letter size book things that made sense for the format Bill already had. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, and then you can do, the great thing about print on demand is you can just order like <clears throat> one book and say it's a test book. So like, it was like, I don't know, like 40 bucks or something to get a test book through Create Space because they're the, the most affordable one. They're owned by Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's how we got started. We since moved to a bigger print company where we can do, uh, what's it called, offset printing? which is a consistent quality, um, a higher quality of printing. So all the books look super nice and I don't have to check every single one. But yeah, Create Space was how I got started. And there's a lot of really smart people on those forums. Yep. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, pr do print on demand to get started. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, and people it's... will even do that if they're gonna go get it printed through, eventually through a big uh, distributor because Create Space is uh, like test print and so cheap. And it like it's cool to get a book. Like mm -hmm. you're like, oh look, I have a book. Yeah, even if you just want one. Yeah, yeah it's super it. neat. Yeah. Um, and then now we just we buy them offset. We have to buy a thousand at a time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we get a much better deal. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Hey Patch. Let's grab this one from Steve, who just spoke with Yaya Han at MegaCon. Fantastic. She says that she recommended, or Steve says that she said. He hit us up. There we go. For using foam to make a helmet, what would you recommend? You're in luck, Steve. You are in so much luck because I just made a helmet making video. Holy crap. This is basically Evil Ted's uh, helmet uh, making, to, uh, template making thing. There's Bob's head that I put it on. Uh, with some twists, I added my own uh, bit of uh, detail to the template making process specifically taking the helmet template and putting it in the computer machine and scaling it up 10% so that it fits nice on your head. So yeah, there's the there's the pattern pieces and then I put them into Inkscape and I trace them and then I scale them up. So anyway, that video will be linked in the show notes if you wanna go check that out. Um, also linked in that video uh, is Evil Ted's so you can go watch his too. They're both good. They're both good. Yeah. So go check those out. And go make it a foam helmet. If yeah. you if you happen to want to make a Voltron Paladin helmet from the new Voltron show, Ted also just released a yes, video he on how to make that. With templates, too. Yeah. And I happen to be making one as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's keep moving here. This next one comes to us from JedZ1. How long were you guys making before you started a YouTube channel slash online business? I've been making stuff my whole life, but really got into prop cast making in like 2009. And I quit my job in 2012. So about three years. Uh, and then I really, I started doing YouTube videos in 2012, but I really got into it in earnest probably like two, 2013. So that's kind of how that worked. Um... 
Mm-hmm. I guess I answered all the questions. Yeah. Well, uh, there's one more in there. <laughs> oh, one more. Adam wants to know, what new thing with 3D printing would uh, you like to try uh, but haven't yet? 3D printing. Well, we have a couple things. I have a printer that can do flexible material, and I have flexible material to run through it. So we're going to be testing a lot of that stuff here very soon. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want to yeah. try modeling more stuff in Fusion 360 yeah. um, and then print that. So just like more, more like, like I'm so used to polygon modeling where it doesn't have to exist in the real world and things can phase into each other and not be functional. And so like it's a very different way to look at making things. And I think that's it's helpful because like it translates over to anything we make, just thinking about dimensions and how things fit and... Oh, yeah. Props is here. Hi, Chad. Hi, Chad. Hi. Chad. Chad's been streaming a whole lot. Yeah, he has. He's working on his Krogan. Um, I would love to try and 3D print a mold or a mold jacket for like a Matrix mold. That's something I would love to try at some point. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, for Matrix molding, that seems like it'd be pretty sweet, especially if your master was a 3D model, so you have the correct dimensions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that would be so good. Uh, thank you for the question, Adam. We're going to call it there. But before we go, in case you missed it, I'm going to play my bee video. I was out today for a walk, and I saw this bee flying, and I took a video of it at 180 frames a second. And it was super epic because he peed. Ready for it? Pee! <laughs> oh. <laughs> this, this is seriously the happiest I've seen Bill in a while. Oh my gosh. I was reviewing the footage just because uh, I thought I got really good footage of a bee flying, and sure enough, he took a leak. Bee! <laughs> Sir Doomington said the tiniest bladder. The tiniest. Boop. That's it. Maybe I need to make that into an animated gif. Yep. Boop. That's fantastic. So, that's. That's that's how my day went. Uh, and that's all the questions. Thank you guys so much for bringing your questions. You guys are awesome. And without Thank those you. questions, we would have very little to talk about. We'd just have to watch <laughs> that video over and over again. That wouldn't be so bad, it but I do appreciate your questions. <clears throat> yeah. um, it just it helps us you know, think of what we want to try in the future, and then everyone can learn from the answers, and it's super handy. Yeah. Once again, I will be at VidCon in a couple of weeks. If you're going to be there, come find me. I'll be just wandering around. I'm not doing a panel or anything, but you can come say hi. If you see me, say hi over at VidCon in Anaheim, California, at the same place where they do BlizzCon. Uh, That's it for today. We might be on uh, Viking Last stream on Saturday. Yeah, maybe if we end up streaming. Viking underscore last. We might be streaming with her uh, coloring uh, in a coloring book. So that's because we're grown-ups and that, that's what we do. Doing fun art projects. That's, uh, yes, art project. Cool. All right. That's it for Prop Live Q&A. Thank you again so much for hanging out with us today, you guys. You're awesome. And we're going to go have dinner. Bye, everybody. Yes. Bye. That's, that's stupid bee. <laughs>